ladies and gentlemen, let me share with you my views on the views, as there is a variety of views on the issue. There exists a peculiar view on the concept of human rights as a specific and exceptionally European heritage of culture. Some claim that neither Africa nor Asia had anything to do with it. If to add the younger daughters of old mother Europe, both Americas, we could consider this great triangle that carries the intellectual and moral human rights achievement of mind to be most promising Western entity, entity of course with exceptions as Venezuela, Nicaragua. Our Western mission was to elaborate and place the idea of human rights among the universal values of life alongside liberty, democracy, and rule of law. We were happy to believe in and insist on their universality, subsequently on their applicability to everyone and everywhere. To enjoy them, became or should become a universal human right as well. Sometimes the wording worldwide recognized principles and values was also employed. Nevertheless, what we are to do and how to live with it when somewhere in tyrannies and satrapies, those values are left morally disapproved and legally unrecognized. When they are not shared with us, we are eagerly advised by some important partners to forget about worldwide scale of values. Moreover, those values, including human rights, we are decidedly rejected and blamed, in example, by the former Russian president, as being bloody Western colonialism. And the unalliable right of Russians or Chinese to live in democracy stays out of the question. We wish to see democracy everywhere. The still ongoing dispute only concerns the methods of its promotion, no force, no export, and timing, but not its substance. So, let democracy grow like a grass, if there is a common desire for that. Or perhaps in lack of such desire, let it fade and rest in peace. Do you agree, ladies and gentlemen? As I see, such passive approach is in line with growing disrespect to anything human but force and pleasure. Big signatories of Universal Declaration are kidding it. Everything is challenged today by widely spread relativism and especially our spectrum of human values. Democracies united in the European Union and a certain Eastern non-democracy go together announcing the common space of freedom, justice, and human rights and even horses do not laugh at that. When written on paper, it looks beautiful, with signatures put down alongside sound reason. Unfortunately, human rights are tested by abusers, not signatures on paper. In our Lithuanian grassroots movement, Sardis mentioned it about, uh, before, a uh, movement of nonviolent moral and political liberation of Lithuania in late 1980s, we used one more special consideration. Among human rights, there should be the right to have one's own homeland. Let us look at this in general. When your homeland is stolen from you, and you are forced to worship the occupying country as your new big homeland, do you have the right to disagree and oppose the violence, injustice, destruction, and humiliation? Of course you have 
saves Europe in its moral and legal identity. No saves old and putinist Russia out of European identity. You were a violator of Soviet totalitarian law and did deserve all kinds of punishment, including capital. Well, one of such punishments violating all imaginable human rights I will present to you a little later. Now let us focus on home and homeland. The Jewish right to have their own homeland was recognized after World War II by its victors dominating in the United Nations, thus was soon implemented in the building of Israeli state and war that caused abuse of human rights of many Arabs. Therefore, terrorism is flourishing there, supported by big interest. And the biggest country in the region that strives for oppressive and nuclear hegemony there claims to tear the state of Israel off from the world's map, again, together with some million of humans. The picture is quite simple. The world peace and the entire world may at any time explode as a result of struggle for human rights. That is, if you better like that honest reason, donated for subsequent generations, and some madmen prefer killing to living. If someone wishes to compare, Chechens attempted to regain their homeland conquest by Russia in the midst of 19th century. The response of Moscow in 1944 and 1994-2004 was short to final solution. If someone wants to look on three. Europe kept silent as if those Muslims in Caucasus were not humans. Afterwards, to be right, European Court of Human Rights passed hundreds of cases of compensation for abused Chechen families, but no war crimes were considered there until now. There are a lot of... Uh, uh, questions about human rights, but let us take some. How to fight everywhere and every discrimination? If you don't consider reminding Katin that the bullet of Enkawudi man across your skull would be less painful of that of assessment, you will agree to not discriminate any victims alongside the position of European Parliament, and very strong documents, including that of this year, April 2. But millions until now are discriminated by lasting indifference, if not fearfulness. Similarly with non-discrimination of perpetrators. As Nuremberg trial went non-discriminating the Nazis in the greatest crime. They were acquitted from the initiating of World War II alongside the allegedly innocent Soviets. Mr. Ribbentrop was hanged for other crimes. Mr. Molotov lived long in an impunity and not in poverty. It was his privilege. The right to sink in unfriendly hosting country was recently denied for Georgian team to Eurovision. Do you have the right to sink in your own country and not run away from the tanks of armored invaders? We exercised this right in Baltic states during our peaceful and moral singing revolution of the late 80s. This human right of singing was then brutally denied in Lithuania in January 1991 by Soviet invaders. It brought our 
unarmed civilians, a number of terrible deaths, and countless injuries. And so far, justice did not reach the killers. To seek justice should be seen as one of human rights era. Is there still a right to expect due respect and apology for those unarmed civilians, say your family members, who have been tortured to death? Ludwig Simutis could be a, from Lithuania could be a perfect example. He was just a boy in a primary when he saw his father, father's deadly mutilated body among 73 martyrs, former political prisoners and non-proved suspects, bestially tortured to death by the Soviet soldiers fleeing from advancing German army, plus some local communists collaborating in that extremely heavy war crime on occupied land. There is documentation in English, please. Uh, those who wish, you may share. <clears throat> Katyn was exceeding in numbers, not in a style. It was a top of execution style. Here is an excerpt from a legal medical protocol of 28 June 1941, I quote. Simutis from Kretinga, Livores mortem visible on abdomen, genitalia beaten, bruises on chest and neck, a gunshot wound shot from behind on the back in the left side near spin. The bullet came through sternum, four centimeters near the nipple. Simutis' father was identified, while many others were not after such a massacre. I hear from the same protocol about two more victims and about the style, of course. Unidentified, Livoris mortem clearly visible on the wool body, tongue torn, lacerated wound of 15 centimeters on the left side of chest, searching on edges shows 20 centimeters. Also a wound on the other side. On the left side below pit, a punctured wound of 15 centimeters depth with uneven edges. The second wound of five centimeters near the shoulder goes from the shoulder joint to front side. The third wound of three centimeters on the back. Unidentified, Livoras mortem clearly visible in the area of hips and on back marks of the cave. Face beaten and epithelium lacerated. Ace badly bruised, 25 centimeter long cut with sharp edges on the forehead. Genitalia bruised. Unquote. Uh, 66 years later, Ludwig Asimutis tried to seek justice. No bloody criminal has so far been punished. But war crimes have no prescription. And one of the killers still lives carefully sheltered in Russia. Simutis requested while Lithuanian court compensation from Russia for the loss of his father. It was his way to get a simple recognition of the fact of crime. An imaginary response of Russian legal and state authorities could sound like that. Mr. Simotis, we are deeply sorry for what happened to your father and to you being orphaned in June 1941. But please, have understanding for us too. We cannot acknowledge that Joseph Stalin and the Red Army did something wrong in Lithuania in 1940, 1941. Therefore, forget your sorrow and lifelong pain and go to hell as the best place where all hopes should be forgotten. The actual response was, was much shorter. The Russian Federation disagrees and has no intention to agree 
with the judicial procedure of that case in the courts of the Republic of Lithuania, unquote. Russian Foreign Office went even further in warning the Lithuanian state to take measures against any appearance of similar cases in the courts of Lithuania. Not the deeds of Soviet military, but the steps of Lithuanian courts we are called violation of international law. The relevant court of Lithuania informed Mr. Simutis in, a, in an exact and more polite form. The defendant, in response to the claim in court case, did state clearly its request to apply for state immunity. Uh, the Russian Federation has indeed the legal immunity under international rules from such investigations and claims for the crimes committed and investigated abroad. Does it have moral immunity? Yes, it does. No moral problems at all. And the clearest lesson, forget any human rights after reading the legal medical protocol from the hell. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to conclude that that abstract human rights concept needs clarification. It is a time for better definition. Human rights indeed require raising new questions as well. One is very special. What is the human being Per se, from the beginning to the end of his or her life, is the human being, while still in the pre-born stage, a human one? Or can it be treated by pundits of sciences and extracted just as tumor? Allow me to remind that there are tumors that feel their mother's hands hear music, and enjoy being loved. Problem is that they cannot say, sorry, I don't have a right to it. What they can, it is mystical revenge for lack of love. As the sense of love is going to be lost ever more in our egotist and consumerist societies. Cruelty towards non-borns and immoral treatment of children as a burden causes the rapid growth of meaningless cruelty among minors at ever more early age. Is it a human reaction or not while still in the womb to feel pain or separate injure, of separate injury and enjoy the overwhelming warmth of love? Where is any dividing line and the general right of someone to live after, after the separation from the mother's body, to enjoy a long life and strive for happiness? The latter human rights was mentioned in the world's first constitution of the United States. And very recently in the constitution of the Buddhist state, Bhutan, I highly value the explanation of prime minister of that country that the goal is not happiness as such, the concept that each person uh, must define for himself, but the aim of the government to create conditions for the pursuit of gross national happiness. That differs a little from everyday mantras of Europeans about gross national product, a site of happiness. Remembering the recent visit of His Holiness Dalai Lama to the, to the European Parliament, when he addressed the plenary and noticed that his daily consumption had ended at 10 a.m., when you will end consuming at midnight, the Buddhist happiness does not require high living standards in dollars. Worthwhile to compare 
with the long list of our great rights, our misty or minimal duties, endless problems, and no response about it all. For what sake? The human rights without a human attitude and compassion are empty words for political speculations. Would you like more debates online of differently destroyed handies or even talks with inhumans? Stop kidding. Tamils are shouting, as many others, no more again, when it's going again and again. If I have no love, I am nothing, said the apostle. This is worthy of most serious consideration, as in 2,000 years, we have made very little progress in the essentials. There is a chance now that fighting and fighting for all those rights, even fundamental and universal, but confused by tricky demagoguery, mixed with mutual animosities and hatred out of solidarity and compassion, not to say love, may turn our civilization into nothing. To avoid this, the world needs a new philosophy of life, not consumerist, what prevails today. It could be called solidarity of the orphans of universe still believing to find the father. Thank you.